so as mo most of you have seen, seen in the past, this, this, uh, this is the standard uh, data resources at EBI and metabolomics and metabolites falls under three different categories. And I, I mainly highlighted this to, to show that we are, we are very well aligned and we work quite closely with uh, Pride. Uh, which is in, in, the, in the bottom left uh, area, and then with uh, uh, reactum, sorry, in the bottom left, and pride in, in the gene, protein, and metabolite expression area. So uh, we also have another uh, bub, uh, chemistry database called Chemo, which is more focused on drug targets, uh, so, so I will not talk about that today. So metabolite started uh, back in, in 2012 because there wasn't a, a common uh, open repository for met metabolomics data. There was a few uh, more specialized repositories that specialized either in, in human or mouse or, or fly or, or different areas. So there was a need for a, a repository that can archive any type of metabolomics ex experiments. So the metabolites archive was, was, was started a few years back, and uh, these are the four logical components to, to the offering. So we have, of course, the data submission part, where we have uh, an offline uh, tool for annotation and data capture. But the data is then, of course, deposited online into the repository. And the main purpose of the repository, as with lots of the other repositories, of course, is, is to, to enable reuse and, and to, to, to help researchers share their findings, anything that backs up their hypothesis. Um, we also have another entry point, of course, around the metabolites themselves. So that here we have more, more information, the chemical information spectra, etc., around the metabolites. I mean, currently we're working quite hard on uh, getting online data analysis tools integrated. I must say we, we don't necessarily develop new tools, but we try to integrate the tools that the community is currently using. So then back to the first part is uh, what we, is a tool we use that's called Isaac Creator that had its beginning here at EBI, but has moved to University of Oxford since. And it's, it's a multi-omics tool. It's, it's a tool for capturing metadata around any type of experiment. Um, so there's quite a lot of different features built in to, to try to help and may, make the, the whole description of the experiment and the metadata capture a bit easier. And also to collate all the necessary raw files that is, is required to construct a complete study. So ISA uh, and is underpinned by a, ta a tab separated file format. And ISA stands for Investigation Study Assay, so just a, 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 a logical uh, setup of any, of any study. So it starts with an overarching investigation. Within the investigation, we can capture one or more, more, more studies. And within each of these studies, there will be a set of assays. So, so assays, of course, would be around the actual instrumentation itself. And then when we put this all together, we also hook on the, all the raw files. I must say that in metabolomics, we're not as organized as in genomics and proteomics in terms of which files we want the submitters to, uh, to give us. We save and ask, we save as raw as possible to enable an, any reuse. We generally would reject things if it's only the last minute process and some people even send us uh, only PDFs and that's obviously not good for anyone. Our tools um, for submission comes from this, uh, let's call it the ISA ecosystem. So, so it's, it's a set of tools that goes from a configuration, which is a set of submission templates into capturing the data into to, yeah, so we, we capture data at this level that produces a tab-separated file format, which is then submitted directly into our repository. And in, in, in the true spirit of EBR, we are very focused on ontology-driven metadata capture. So the tool uh, will search things like the uh, OLS, ontology lookup service, which is maintained by Hennings Group, and also by a portal for relevant terms. And we, we can, of course, uh, guide the user or to a certain extent dictate the users to the specific ontologies we, we, we would like them to annotate the data with. 
He said, I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of screenshots for Isaac Creator. So here is just the general study description. So this is the free text, typically like the, the abstract of the paper. Here's also where you define which assays, so which, which instruments uh, have been used for this particular study. And then a bit about the study setup. And, and further on, of course, most of this is, is uh, publication driven. And, and a lot of the traffic we see is in pre-publication status, which, which is of course the state for, for many of the public archives. We also capture the dif differentiating factors for this particular study. So, so what are we actually looking for? What, what is it that, that backs up the hypothesis for, for the researchers? Then we have a section where we capture all the protocols, either as, as free text or you can attach files. But most people just use the free text editor and, and paste in the description for, for how the different protocol steps were, were carried out, normally with a reference to different papers in this text. And then on the assay side, sorry, there's lots of information on this slide. So it's, it's just to show that there's, we, we, we captured quite a lot of information about around the different protocol steps, how the instrumentation was set up, and then what are the different file outputs from the instrument itself. But of course, not all the studies are the same. So this, this is, I'm sure, sure this is uh, like preaching to the choir here. This is something you're all aware of that we need different templates to drive the metadata capture based on the type of, of uh, organism or type of study that is being uh, conducted. So we, we have a set of templates which the submitter will, will choose from at, at the beginning of the, of the study setup. To help a bit with the annotation around the small compounds themselves, so we have de developed an additional plugin to this isolator tool that if you fill in any of these first five columns, we, we search PubChem because all the EBI data goes to PubChem. So we, we, we actually search our own data back, back from there just so that we don't only search for identifiers known within the EBI infrastructure. We also accept any form of commonly known database identifier. Later, we, we, we would typically curate these identifiers into, um, into database identifiers that, that we know here at EBI. So just a sh short recap. So we use an isocreator tool, which is a desktop tool that resides on the, on the individual researcher's computer. That builds an, an archive, a complete study archive that is transferred to us using the normal methods like Aspera FTP or, or just over, over the web. We then take this apart again and, and check it to, to, to see if, if we, we have all the data that is required and then we publish it on the Metablux website. So this, this is just a, a, a screenshot of, of the current uh, website. So after the submitter has logged in, you, just, it's, you don't need an account to be a casual browser or download the data. That's of course completely open, but to submit data, you need a submitter account. So after it logged in, there's quite a lot of submissions, as I mentioned, has the, the typical pre-publication status. And after our initial online validation and creation process has, has gone, has passed, then, then we give the uh, submitters and the journal reviewers a pre-publication link. So that's a, a, just a normal uh, private link. And then uh, the study stays in the disembargo period until the pu publication date has been reached. So to help both the uh, reviewers and the submitters themselves, we have two sets of validations, one within the desktop tool itself to validate the integrity of the study archives. So we look at are, are all the raw files present? Are, are all the, the elements you, you, you believe you have annotated actually included in the file? And after upload, we, we do a bit more screen and check, where we also have this traditional uh, traffic light type of indication of how happy we are with, uh, with a particular study. So this is then some screenshot of the same study we saw in ISA Creator earlier. So it's the same information, just obviously laid out a bit different with a, a bit, bit more data added to it. 
In this case, this is an NMR study. And we see this is on Homo sapiens and uh, yeah, just a normal study description and publication and such. Protocols, yeah, just list the protocols that are there. If there's links to papers, that will be automatically hyperlinked here, of course. We have, uh, obviously, information around the biological samples that we used, and then the study factors that were defined can either be a factor that affects the assay run itself, or it can be a factor that did differentiate the samples. So in this, this case here, gender was one of, the one, 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 one of the factors, and that's obviously on the sample side. On the assay, we have quite a lot of information. This table goes quite a far away to the right, so it's quite a lot of, of scrolling to see all the information. But maybe more uh, relevant to our users is the small molecules themselves, so the table of the met metabolites. We allow users to download the whole studies, of course, or they can just pick the files they want, or they can download YF2P or Aspera. Again, this is old news to most of you on, the, on this call, I'm, I'm sure. Then we have, this This is a fairly new uh, feature we added. It's, it's a bit more detailed uh, validation, as I mentioned earlier. So this is where we're trying to help the reviewers of, of, the, of the paper to see if, if the, the data elements that have been reported are there. But I should mention, we don't challenge the science itself. We don't look at the spectra to see do we agree that this particular peak is this particular metabolite? We 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 don't uh, we 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 don't offer that uh, type of service yet. Here is another study that fails validation because there are certain elements missing. So we we don't allow reviewers on until uh, the submitters have supplied enough information to to pass this in initial uh, validation. Another fairly new thing for us, which we, we haven't done done before, um, just from a, a lack of resources point of view, is we're now integrating pathways. So in, in this case, this is uh, with something called MetExplore, which is a French initiative, but we're also integrating Re Reactome here. So we do it on, on a study basis, so a collection of metabolites, and we'd also do it later on a compound by compound basis. So all the metabolites that are reported into the archive, we then automatically uh, put this into our database called Kebi. So Kebi is a database for small molecules, and Kebi stands for chemical entities of biological interest. It's, all, it's always important for us to try to get EBI into the titles uh, so, somehow. So this is a database that is very much focused on manual curation and high quality versus high quantity. So at the moment, it's about 100,000 compounds in there, and about 48,000 of those have been painstakingly gone through by hand by one or several of the curators to, to make them as correct as possible. And then of those, again, about 23,000 of those have been classified as a metabolite. So this is where Kebi, in addition to be a, a, a compound database, has also a chemical ontology that, uh, that, that will classify the individual compounds according to their, their biological and, and chemical role. So, so that is uh, quite unique for the Kebi database. We have lots of information about the different compounds themselves. Of course, we also link out to other, other databases. So that, that is actually, that's quite important to give them the link into the other uh, resources, including the proteomic resources here at, at the EBI. Uh, as I mentioned, CAB is mainly focused on manual curation. But the way we do that is we, we, we upload or integrate external data sets. And then that comes in with what we call a, a one-star classification. And then we if, if it's from me, what we believe is, is a known, trusted, high quality source, then, then, we, then they automatically get a two star, but nothing gets these this three star concepts until they have been manually checked and approved by our curators on, on this side. So it's, it's difficult to, to fund this type of uh, project, but it also results in a very, very high, uh, high level of, of quality. 
So now I'm going to have a couple of, of screenshots in case you guys haven't been looking at Kebi in the past. So as I mentioned, there's, there's, there's lots of information about the company itself, about the, the chemistry, and also about other identifiers that we, we call them secondary Kebi identifiers. That means there's either a duplicate entry or it has been submitted to us with, a, with another database uh, ID. And this, all the, the compounds have a stable identifier, so we don't, we don't remove any of these identifiers. So if you point to a, a secondary identifier, it's automatically in the background rerouted to the latest. And then we have a bit more information, like in GM mass and stuff like that. Also quite interesting here is that we link them to species again. And here also, not in this screenshot, but here also we will be linked back to the met metabolomics archive. So say that this particular metabolite was identified in a study on human in this particular uh, metabolite study. Then we have a classification for each compound about their chemical roles and their biological roles. But then the more unique part is this, the Kebi ontology. So that shows in the overarching tree st structure. It's like a taxonomy tree. Shows exactly where, which roles the compound is playing and, and what, what are incoming and outgoming uh, trees. And there's also a couple of visual components to, 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 to see this in, in a more traditional tree st structure. Uh, more references again, or all the synonyms we can find are either automatically add or manually added during the creation process so that you can search for these names and get to these entries. And then we have a set of database links. And also we have a component here where we do lots of automatic cross references. So this is mainly around the common identifiers we use from like uh, Uniprot and, and, uh, and other places. So you can, you can then navigate from the compounds in, into the external uh, databases. So these are the same compounds that we then add a bit more information for in the metabolites repository. So the, the, the extra things we add in, in addition to all, all the chemical information from the Kebi database is we, we, add, we add a bit more information about the, where it has been identified in, in terms of studies. We, we also try to link to different pathways. In this case, again, Wiki Pathways and CAG and Reactome is currently being worked on. So Antonio, you should be pleased to see that coming in soon. Uh, we also add links to reactions and then different types of spectra. In this case, it's some an, an, NMR spectra, but also uh, the different spectral uh, libraries are included there. We have a small, uh, I would say, a collapsed taxonomy tree. So this is not like the whole NCBI ta taxon. This is, we, we, we have kind of taken out a lot of the in intermediate nodes and, and the genus just to have a small and easier visual view on the species as they are represented in our uh, archive. So, so this, this is around what has been submitted to the Metabolites repository itself. Uh, of course, we, we offer the standard download of the, the tools and then an additional FTP download of all the public ex experiments. We discovered recently, it's very obvious to us now, but our help pages, we, we were a bit surprised of some of the quality of the data submissions from, from certain countries that have, uh, shall we say, uh, a bit more strict firewall <laughs> Yeah, so the Chinese effectively couldn't get to our our, our uh, documentation pages. So we then obviously added them in a static FTP links as well. So that's why this is a bit busy, this uh, page, but it's, uh, we, we believe that these guides are very, very thorough and, and good. And we the, the quality of the, all the submissions have gone up quite significantly. As with the other archives and the repositories, we we wouldn't be where we are without working closely with, with the journals. And so we, it took us a bit of time to get there, so a couple of years of work to 
get the journals to notice us, but now we are being uh, recommended by, by quite a few, and that is where, where most of the ad hoc or one-to-one -one data submissions come from. That's around the, the, the journals telling the submitters to make the data public. This is not done as well as is done in genomics and proteomics. It's not, it hasn't been the culture to share it in the same way, so people are more uh, hesitant to share. But it, it's slowly uh, changing and it's getting, getting a lot better. It certainly is a lot better now than it was a couple of years ago. So, but that's more on the one-to-one -one su su submissions to get. We also have started now with more automated solutions where we talk to the software vendors. Again, we've been inspired by you guys in the proteomics area. So we, our first uh, real tool, a real vendor is Biocritis in Austria that have now a mechanism to automatically export certain of their targeted kits directly into the Metabolites archive. So we, we are expecting that to, to pick up quite a lot of traffic in, 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 in the years to come. We are working quite a lot now with both within the Metabolize project and in the Phenomenal project, which I will mention a bit in a few minutes, around uh, me metabolomics data analysis workflows. So we are integrating our uh, files and the, the raw files we have, been, we have so far. So we're trying to add a bit of value on top of that by, by giving some initial data processing and analysis and, and feature detection and, and steps like that so that smaller labs or individuals that have little or no bioinformatics experience or resources they can pull on can, can try to reach some conclusion using the same tools they would have used themselves on the local computer but without the hassle to get it all up and working. As I mentioned uh, a few times already, we have been we have taken lots of inspiration from the proteomics area. So we have this site. So this is of course inspired by Proteome Exchange. So we set up in a, we had a coordination action with the, the, the European Commission to to see if we can come up with a better acceptance of certain standards in metabolomics. And one of the things was data exchange. And this, of course, is also what uh, Yasset has moved on into the Omics DI. So that's the, the, the same mechanism as the same data sets we publish here. It's also what uh, Yasset is, 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 is using for that. So I guess the numbers are quite small compared to what you guys are, are, are used to. But if, 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 if you look at the growth, it, it's uh, looking quite optimistic at the moment and other uh, repositories have expressed an interest to be, to be part of this, this exchange. So that will benefit both the Metabolome Exchange and the, and the Omics DI. Maybe of interest to you guys in the States here is that the Metabolomics Workbench is a, an NIH funded uh, project. So it's these six uh, centers, so these are the core Metabolomics Resource Centers. And they have been funded for five years. I think they have a couple of years left of funding. So all the data that comes into to, to these labs ends up in metabolomics uh, workbench. And we have data conversions between the metabolomics workbench team in the University of San Diego and uh, ourselves. So they read and convert our metadata and we do the same with, with their metadata. <coughs> Sorry. We also link with uh, biosamples. So that is, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, if, if this was, I think this was inspired by NCBI biosamples. So we have now a daily sync. So all the data in EBI biosamples and NCBI, NCBI biosamples are, are synced on a, on a daily basis. So, so this, this is to provide a mechanism of, of asking questions like in which other omics and which, which other experiments have this particular type of sample been, been used for this, this organism, this sample, this, this sample type. So that, that's quite useful to, to try to come up with more multi-omics view on things. Sorry, just had some water. Um, next, we started up in September a project we call uh, Phenomenal, that stands for Phenome and Metabolome Analysis. 
So this is an infrastructure project, so it's not a research project. So it's a large-scale computing with um, medical metabolomic phenotopic data. And the idea here is to cloud enable lots of tools, again, along the same lines as I mentioned for the approach we have around the met metabolomics archive. So well well established existing tools that the community is 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 using uh, today, but again to to see if we can one move this a bit more into the clinic because I guess metabolomics is not that well accepted in, in a clinical uh, setting. So 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 we 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 are trying to change that. So there's a couple of uh, hospital that is part of of this consortium. Um, also then enable uh, people to go on to a Cloudify portal, upload their data, and deploy these tools automatically into Amazon, Google, Microsoft, or the participating partner clouds. So we are we are trying to see if we can harvest more of all the met the, the metabolomics data that we we know is currently being generated, and we we see with more and more is being generator in a, in a clinical setting today. So we, we try then to see if we can come up with a set of both virtual machines and uh, Docker containers to uh, uh, enable quite a lot of these different tools around. So we have a few different logical groups again. So data Producers will typically be the big archives like Metabolomics Workbench or the Metabolized Archive here at EBI. And that we are also looking at moving uh, Metabolites into the Amazon Cloud. And then the different tool makers. So these are then the tools that are used by the community. And then the different infrastructure providers, as I mentioned, both, both uh, uh, public. Uh, you can sign up for yourself or the different uh, labs or institutes uh, around the world. Because when it comes to the data, when it comes, as you know, to privacy and ethics, then there's lots of data sets that cannot leave leave the clinic. Or so then the institute will rather download this tool and fire it up locally than move the data out into a public cloud. So we facilitate all this through a phenomenal VRE, and that's a virtual resource environment. So that is a portal where you can search for all of the, all of the, the, the tools and, and the resources and the computing time you need. It's, it's, it's free of charge, of course. You can then choose to then deploy it and fire, fire it up in the phenomenal VRE, or as I mentioned, you can, you can pull this down locally if there's, there's data sen sensitivity issues of, uh, are, are around your sample. So we are trying, this is a, a bit of a simplified view of the aim, so we, we are we're looking at all of this bio, biomedical data, and we are trying to come up with standardized, re reproducible steps for for all the data collection and quality control and the different processing and analysis steps. And we we hope that when we are working with a few of these different labs and a few big phenome centers that are pop popping up around the world, then when when these uh, these typically run hundreds of thousands of, of, of samples in a fairly short time, and if, if they are successful in doing this, then, then we hope to bring these same methods into to smaller labs and make it more publicly available. It's a bit of a technical slide, but we have here at EBI something called Embassy Cloud, which is more aimed towards uh, external collaborators that would like to run tools or run their services here at EBI Data Center, the EBI and Sanger Data Center. So then, then you can rent space and com computing time, just as you would do on, on Amazon or or Google. So this is the current setup underneath our uh, phenomenal area at the moment. So it's, it's a typical uh, traditional setup with a content manager, which is WordPress in this case, and we have some workflow engines, but it's all underpinned by all 
the data, all the Docker containers, all the building of the virtual machines, all the orchestration and everything is publicly available in GitHub. And then we use a standard continuous integration system to pull this in after each commit. And then rebuild these apps, rebuild these uh, containers, and then we re re automatically redeploy them on the on the cluster. So it's quite a lot of uh, new cool things uh, for us in in an era that is changing in incredibly fast. But we have we're working three or four different large groups together, and we seem to have all reached the same conclusion in terms of the te technology. So we are fairly confident that what what we are building is 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 very up to date and current as as of now. Just to finish off the normal typical slides, so this is the current Kebby team. It's about 50-50 mix here between manual curation and the software de developers. Then the current phenomenal team. You'll you'll see a few of us appearing in more than one slide here. That's because we are working on, on several projects, of course. And then You'll be happy to hear that this is the final slide. So this is the uh, metabolized team. So that was all I was going to do in this very brief introduction to what we're doing. 